Okay. Right, this is part two of the video on the video series on electromagnetism for GCE O level science physics uh, in Singapore. Right, uh, for this uh, part two of the video, we are going to focus on the uses of electromagnet magnets. Okay, so um, before we plunge into uh, some of the common uses of electromagnets, I think it would be good for us to first understand what electromagnets mean. All right. Now, the three points over here uh, is a very summarized uh, idea of an electromagnet. Okay, an electromagnet is simply made up of a soft iron core. Okay, a soft iron core around which a solenoid is uh, placed around uh, placed around the iron core. Okay, and uh, if you remember, a solenoid is simply made up of many many turns of um, insulated copper wire. So if you put this around a uh, soft iron core. And the wires itself is then linked to a, a electrical power supply, either DC or AC. Therefore, simply the iron core with the solenoid around it is what we call an electromagnet. Okay. Now, um, in most cases, you find that electromagnets uh, we prefer to use a direct current source like batteries or dry cells. Okay. Um, AC can also be used. Um, a high frequency alternating current will work uh, almost similar to a direct current supply. However, a low frequency alternating current, uh, there's a, if you do use this, there will be some slight difference with um, a direct current supply. For a low frequency alternating current supply, you'll find that the magnetism will appear and disappear around the iron core. Well, there could be some uh, application which require the use of low frequency alternating current. Okay, now let's move on to one of the first example of a uh, use of electromagnets. Okay, a simple one. Um, an electromagnet is used to uh, attract magnetic materials. Okay, so just look at the circuit on the left hand side. It's a it's a fairly simple circuit made up of a soft iron nail, right, uh, which is uh, easily magnetized and demagnetized. And around it, you see the insulated copper wires which have been turned around the iron nails, and therefore, this is what we call the solenoid. A variable resistor which is used to adjust the current, the size of current in the circuit. A dry cell which provides electrical supply and electrical power, and a switch. Okay, so simply by closing the switch, completes the circuit, and by adjusting the variable resistor, that will give us different size current flowing through the solenoid. And by doing so, we can actually control the strength of the magnetic uh, field created around the soft iron. Okay. So once it's closed, uh, if there were iron filings around, of course the iron filings will be attracted to the soft iron nail. And what happens when we open the switch? Okay. When once you open the switch, the current uh, ceases to flow in the circuit, and being soft uh, magnetic material. Um, it will demagnetize very quickly, the iron will demagnetize very quickly and as a result, the magnetic material, for this case, iron filings will simply fall off. Now, question is, can you um, think about one possible application of this simple circuit? Yes, we actually use this, this kind of circuit at the garbage uh, yard or uh, in, the, in the waste uh, collection area whereby we use this simple circuit, of course, at a much bigger scale to separate iron materials from the rest of the rubbish that has been collected. Okay. So, um, how do you think that we can actually increase the strength of the magnetic field around, around the soft iron nail? If you recall the three factors that affect the strength of an electromagnetic uh, uh, field, Okay, the first will be the size of the electrical current in the solenoid. The second one would be the number of turns in the solenoid. And the third, of course, is already present here, which is the presence of a soft iron core inside the solenoid. Okay, so that brings us to the next slide. Okay, so we can actually increase the magnetic strength of the electromagnet by passing a larger current through the solenoid. This can be done by adjusting the variable resistor which is inside the circuit. Okay, this is your variable resistor. And the second factor is by increasing the number of turns of the solenoid. If you double the number of turns, the magnetic strength of the magnetic field will of course be doubled as well. Okay? And the last point, of course, there's the presence of a soft magnetic material. Okay? 
Now moving on to the next application, which is um, using an electromagnet to ring a bell. Okay, this is an electric bell. So how does it work? Just let's have a quick look at it. Still made up of a simple circuit of an electromagnet core. For this particular example, there are a pair of it. Doesn't matter, it is still known as an electromagnet. Connected to a battery, a switch, and uh, the rest of the circuit, this is interesting. Let's look at it. This is a contact screw, uh, which is now touching the soft iron armature. And the soft iron armature is connected to a steel spring. Uh, this is interesting. The steel spring. The spring here, uh, if you see, if you take note of this particular word, um, it suggests that this allows the soft iron armature to actually move left to right easily. Okay. And finally, at the end of the soft iron armature, there's a hammer which is used to strike the gong. So how does this work? Right. When the switch is closed, electrical current will flow in such a way uh, in the direction that is from the positive towards the negative. So when the electrical current flows through the solenoid and around the soft iron core, you know by now the electromagnet will be activated. There's a magnetic field created around this electromagnet and therefore attracting the soft iron armature towards it. So the soft iron armature will swing towards the left and when it does when it does that, the hammer will strike the gong. Ding! That's what it will sound like. Alright? But the moment this swings to the left, take note, the contact between the contact screw and the soft iron armature will be broken. So once this is broken, the circuit will be open and therefore the, the soft iron uh, core will no longer be magnetized. So when it's no longer magnetized, the steel spring will pull the soft iron armature back towards the right. And therefore it will come to contact with the con uh, contact screw again. This again complete the circuit and as current starts to flow through the circuit again, the electromagnet will become magnetized and therefore attracting the soft iron armature to the left again, strike the hammer, striking the gong, causing another sound and uh, yeah, when that happens, the contact is again broken, causing the circuit to go off. So this um, happens uh, repeatedly. Okay, so therefore you hear a series of uh, gong sound, ding 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 until such time when the switch is open again. Okay? Right. At this point in time, you may be wondering why I am going through with uh, all of you the step-by-step -step, um, sequence of how this electromagnet works. Well, the, the answer to that is very simple. Um, for GCE O-Level Science Physics, there have been questions whereby you are given a, a certain circuit diagram such as this um, and you are asked to actually write down, okay, elaborate how basically this electromagnet is used to make an electric bell. So what I have just uh, uh, discussed with all of you, um, those key points has to be actually written down. Okay. Now take note, you are not going to get um, a diagram that is similar to this. Um, for the GCO level science physics paper, the examiners can be very creative. They can give you different kind of a circuit, but essentially it's the same idea. It's the use of electromagnet that is used to uh, magnetize uh, some other soft iron uh, fixture, causing um, uh, the the purpose uh, for this particular case, the electric bell, to to sound to work. All right. So you have to be creative. You have to be ready to accept uh, different kind of uh, diagrams that will come out. Okay. Now, for example, let's have a look at the next application here. Okay. How about this? This is a magnetic relay. Okay. Now, um, for some of you, you do not know the meaning of a relay. A relay is simply a switch that is used to switch on circuits that operate at very, very high current. Okay. This very often happens in factories, in the industries, or at the power stations. And why do we need a magnetic relay? simply because this is to, is a way to protect the end user okay um, you do not want to be somebody who activate a switch that is operating at a high current due to risk of a short circuit okay or electric shock so what we what what we, we have done is simply to create another a, a simple circuit where we can use a circuit to activate another circuit that contains a switch 
to power up the high current uh, devices okay so how does it work so let's look at this now let's uh, look at these two parts so the first part is at the top over here okay these are the contacts that leads to the circuit that um, operates at high electrical current okay at this bottom left is another circuit whereby we use an electromagnet to activate to help us activate the relay okay so how does it work if you look at the bottom carefully it's a very very simple electromagnet soft iron core solenoid connected to a, the circuit connected to a dry cell and a switch this is where the end user will activate the relay okay and uh, at the top you find that there's an L shape okay uh, soft soft iron armature with a pivot at this particular point now how does this uh, uh, affect this operation of the soft iron armature if you see a pivot at this particular point it is meant to suggest to you that the pivot can actually turn will allow the armature to turn in such a way okay as an example all right so now how does it work if i'm the end user and i were to switch on the circuit you know that the soft iron core will be magnetized and therefore it will attract the soft iron armature towards it when the soft iron armature is uh, attracted towards it it will look somewhat like that okay and uh, it will turn in a anti-clockwise direction forcing the contacts for the second circuit to touch when these two contacts touch the circuit to the high current uh, device will be completed and therefore the high current uh, device will start to operate okay so that's basically how magnetic relay uh, uh, is used okay again uh, uh, there has been a few questions in the past year which uh, they have um, been creative with different design of a magnetic relay and uh, candidates are you know, I mean you guys are required to explain based on the given diagram how it works okay so take note of that as well okay so that brings us to the end of this video I will move on to the last part of this chapter uh, regarding um, the use of an electromagnet to generate a force okay we'll talk more uh, we discuss a little bit more about that in the next video right thank you